Well, thanks everybody for coming. Uh, this is the first time doing this, so if there's any hiccups, uh, you know, make sure to let me know afterwards and I can hopefully do it better next time. Uh, kind of the goal of this first class is, first of all, to go over the basics of brewing. Make sure everybody knows how to brew a batch and get started, um, and hopefully take some pressure off of if you already get started brewing. Um, another goal is to get you familiar with what a, a recipe is going to look like if you pull a recipe offline. Um, that way you can know a little bit more about how to read a recipe without necessarily needing instructions every time that you already a batch of beer. Because if you read instructions from four different places, they're going to be all a little bit different. And so having a consistent way to brew every batch of beer is going to be pretty important. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to run through the whole brewing process. Um, I'm going to get to our first hop edition here, and then uh, maybe that we'll talk a little bit about the local homebrew club. That's Will back there. Um, and then uh, towards the end, the whole boil process is going to take about an hour. Towards the end of that, I'll go through, uh, there's two different hop editions. So after the second hop edition, I'm going to go over um, cleaning and sanitizing um, and everything that's going to happen after the brew day. So to get started, what I've already done here, um, before you guys came, is I have what are called specialty grains steeping in this pot. Um, it's sitting at about 160 degrees. I usually recommend 155 to 160 degrees for 20 to 30 minutes. This has been in for about 20 minutes. Um, what's in the, these grains are everything that's listed on the top portion of that recipe. Uh, it says steeping grains. There should be some Munich 20. Um, that's kind of a ready, uh, toasted kind of malt that gives a little bit of a, um, like a, if you imagine toast before it's black, a little bit of that flavor. Um, then we have some Crystal 75, which is going to give you some dark caramel and toffee-like flavors. We have some chocolate malt, which is, you know, very much what it says. It tastes like chocolate. And then we have some roasted barley, which is going to kick that chocolate into a little bit of a coffee flavor, add some acidity, and uh, give you the, the flavor of a stout. So that's what we got brewing in here. And basically what we've done is we've made a grain tea with all those grains. So like I said, this has been soaking for about 20 minutes. The next step is to just pull it out. And then... A little trick I like to do, because I don't want to wait for all the liquid to drain out, is I just put it in a bowl or a pitcher, and then as it starts to drain the rest of the liquid out, I'll keep pouring that back in here. <coughs> and then we're going to bring this up to a up to a boil. So I'm going to turn on the heating function of this. It won't take very long to get it to a boil. And all I do that is going to stir in our fermentables. Um, this particular recipe is very simple. It has the lightest malt extract possible. Um, all that is is uh, it takes the sugars out of grains, um, in this case really light grains, and it, uh, it concentrates them into a powder. So this is just grain sugar. Um, there's also lactose in here because this particular recipe is a milk stout. Lactose isn't a very common ingredient, but it's sometimes fun to fill with, and uh, I like it in this particular recipe. How's it going? So now this basically looks like frothy milk powder. So while these are starting to melt in there, I'm actually going to get glass of water. Um, when the water starts to boil, before what's called hot break, um, the proteins and starches in this will form this thick, frothy, looks like the top of a milkshake kind of head to them. And when the water starts to boil and air tries to escape, that can start to rise up. A trick to avoiding that um, from actually getting to the top and boiling over is to have a glass of water handy. And if that gets super close, I'll just pour a little bit of water in and that'll break that head down. Uh, it's battling the temperature and it's also just breaking surface tension. Oh, okay. um, there's a product called, uh, what is it called? Firm it's cap. Firm cap. Yeah, that's it. Um, and then Five Star has one too. But anyways, it's basically silicone and what it does is it breaks that surface tension so that um, it doesn't form that thick head. And the nice thing about the silicone is it ends up just dropping down to the bottom of the fermenter. 
uh, later on, so it doesn't actually end up in the beer. Despite what food bit says. So that's pretty much where we're at right now. Um, it'll be once it starts to get to a rolling boil, we're going to add our first hop addition. Uh, we'll go that, over that in a second. If you guys want to take a look at uh, where we're at and see uh, kind of up close what this is looking like, um, feel free to come up. Right now, we're working on what's it's the bittering addition. And uh, basically, what we're focusing on with the bittering addition is uh, how many of the alpha acids are coming out of the hops. Um, there's some other compounds that are going to stick around, but for the most part, what we're focusing on is the alpha acids. Um, and as long as they're in there for that full 60 minutes at 212 degrees, uh, those alpha acids will be loosely estimatable in terms of how bitter we're making the beer. Um, towards the end, uh, we're focusing on the time that it's in there for the uh, while it's at 212 degrees. Uh, so towards the end, um, that becomes a little bit more important. With IPAs. There's a hop addition, several hop additions you can do after the boil is over and temperature can be more important. But for the most part, we're just as long as we get that bitterness in the ballpark that we're looking for, we're good to go. Um, the hop addition that I just added, uh, it says 60 minutes, 60 minutes addition. So that's one thing that's important for reading those recipes that you guys have. Um, there's two different hop additions on there, and one's a 60 minute addition and one's a 15 minute addition. The 60 minute is the first one that you add, and what that means is it's going to be in there for 60 minutes. Uh, that's how uh, the bitterness is calculated. Uh, there's a certain number of alpha, a certain percentage of alpha acids in the hops, um, and uh, that times the amount of hops that you use times the uh, amount of time that's in the boil. Not exactly times, but you know, some fancy calculation. This is how you tell um, what your estimated bitterness is going to be. Um, that being said, estimated bitterness is a little bit of a sham. So when you see IBUs, not a lot of places actually even know what IB the beer is. They just kind of guess and hope it's close. And even then, it doesn't mean as much as most people think it means in terms of flavor. But it's a good place to start. So I am going to switch this around a little bit. Start getting this ready. So we got about three minutes left in the boil. Yeah, this is a star sand solution. Pull up here again just to be sure. And star sand solution is pretty fast acting too, which is nice. It's what? What did you say? Fast acting. Oh, okay. So, even just on contact, it's already starting to do its job. Uh, and the foam, that's, there's always going to be foam left behind. That's actually helping to keep this sanitized as well, which is nice. I love this thing because it turns off automatically with the pack. It's amazing. I don't know if I'm strong enough to do this from right there. Put this on the floor. Don't fear the foam. Before I add yeast, yeast, what I'll do is I'll just wait for this to get down to room temperature. Um, if you want to get really into it, um, technically what you should do is you should put this in an ice bath and chill it first. Uh, when you do that, what I like to do is right before I pull out the heat, put the lid on, and then I put the whole thing in the ice bath. That way the steam is helping keep the lid sanitary. And the whole thing in an ice bath, nothing is going to be floating around and dropping into it. Um, and the quicker you get your yeast into there, the less of a risk you're running. Um, but more often than not, you're pretty safe with not having contamination, as long as you're good about sanitizing all your equipment. Um, especially once the yeast in there, it's going to help create a competitive environment where the bacteria doesn't want to exist. So the, if you were to crash your work down, 
fast, um, and then get it in there so that the whole process of getting it down to room temperature is quicker. Uh, that's theoretically the best way. Hey everybody, thanks for watching. That was the first in a series of classes that we're going to have here at the Homebrew Supply Store. Uh, in the future, what we're going to be doing through this channel is breaking that down into individual components so new brewers can learn through our channel uh, every step that's going to be important in, in being a beginning brewer. For those of you who are maybe a little bit more experienced, we're also going to be very experimental here, uh, going through new ingredients, new hops, and new techniques that we learn either through our customers or through contemporary literature. So be sure to follow the channel, stay tuned, and uh, uh, join us. Please be sure to comment uh, below anything that you would like to learn about in the homebrewing world. Cheers!